Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the World Golf Hall of Fame's Moments That Matter After Show. And we are joined by the great Miss Meg Mallon. Meg, how are you? I'm great, Charlie. How are you? I'm good. This was good. a great week. Uh, our piece on honesty. What'd you think of the piece? Oh, uh, it's. I mean, to be with Hale Irwin and and um, Lee Trevino is pretty awesome. So that was that was fun to be a part of that. Absolutely, three of our greats. And now you're obviously a lifetime you've given to the game of golf. But ten seconds is what the discussion was. We just chatted about it a little bit. But could you give a brief summary of the ten second rule to the listeners here? Well, so I was fully aware of the 10 second rule. I know that when you uh, hit a putt and it hangs on the lip of a cup, you have 10 seconds to either make the stroke or allow the putt to drop in. So I, I was fully aware of that. The issue that I had was that the 10 in, when I got up to the, to the cup, the ball was oscillating on the cup. So my instinct was, is you can't hit a moving golf ball. Right. And so um, we were waiting and waiting and, the ball then dropped in the hole. But before it dropped in the hole, I, I was aware of the 10 seconds I was going to hit the putt in, and my playing partner yells, don't hit it, it's moving. So I backed off, and the ball went in. So, you know, we all celebrated, moved on, and, and uh, thought, you know, that because the ball was moving, that it was it, – it, it overrode the 10-second rule. But right. that wasn't the case. <laughs> So what are you thinking? Because you said there was a conversation after that. Now, what are you thinking that night getting ready for the next day? What's going through your head? Well, I, my, uh, I was late, uh, played really late. And so I had, and I was leading the golf tournament after that round. So I had the media and all that kind of stuff. So I got to the driving range really late um, to hit some balls after my round, ran into two players that I was staying with that week. Um, and one of them was my caddy's wife, uh, Dana Dorman. And we started telling the story about, you know, the ball hanging on the lip and it was there forever and, but it was moving and, right. and the two players were kind of looked at each other. And when we got back um, to our place that we were staying in this corporate house, it was a really nice place. But when we got back there, we started talking about, um, they, they knew the rules, like, like who knew this rule that if a ball is hanging and oscillating on a cup, it's deemed to be at rest. And that's actually written that way in the Book of Rules. And they both knew that. So, you know, when I started thinking about it, you know, I thought, gosh, it probably was more than 10 seconds. And um, I didn't sleep all night. And then I remembered that the Golf Channel was there. Right. And that they could easily, you know, count the amount of time that the ball was hanging on the lip. So woke up early in the morning, Drove over to the golf course, even though my I was, you know, in the last group, I was teeing off, you know, how six hours later or whatever. Went over there, got the officials. We went into the golf channel booth, and sure enough, it was about 19 seconds, you know, with all the, you know, backing off and everything. It was 19 wow. seconds. So, even though my playing partner called me off the ball, that didn't count towards the timing. So the 10 second rule was breached, and I got disqualified. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and you said you couldn't sleep that night. Like how? Yeah. How, how how much does that the honesty and the integrity of the game oh. of how much does that mean to you? Uh, it was ingrained in me. I mean it, that that's what makes golf so beautiful and separate from other sports. I mean, you know, I played all sorts of other sports, and most of it's trying to get away with stuff, right? You're exactly. trying to exactly you know not see the officials see you do something or, or something like that. Golf is completely different that way. It it tests your integrity and your honesty and. That's what I love about it so much. But I mean, that really tested my integrity and honesty because here I am leading a golf tournament. How often does that happen? And I was also close to where I grew up. So my whole family was there and, you know, it was a big deal. And um, but, you know, at the end of the day, there's no way I could live with myself if I knew I breached a rule. And, you know, and, and especially if I had gone on to win the tournament. Right. I couldn't have lived with myself. Right. And you have the integrity of a Hall of Famer, and that's why you're an immortal yeah. in the Hall. So, who put that integrity in you? When did you learn that golf is a little different yeah. than other sports? Well, you know, my parents were big on that. And, and so, you know, it starts at home for right. sure. But, but then when you continue on into the game and you play amateur golf and you play in college, I mean, that keeps getting ingrained to you that. You know, it's important to to call rules on yourself and call penalties on yourself and and make sure you do the right thing out there because 
you know, sometimes you're the only one that, that knows what's going on. So you got to not only live with yourself, you have to protect the field and, you know, and protect the game for that matter. I think a lot of our viewers, uh, Meg, have been fibbers on the golf course. I don't think. <laughs> Well, it's possible. I mean, you know, I, I, it's it's when when you play at the level that we play, and right, you know, it's it's the things you do when people aren't looking. Um, but you also have to wake up, you know, feeling like you're a good human being every day Absolutely. too. And, Absolutely. And uh, my, you know, my brother's kids were there, and um, you know, they were really upset. The kids were upset. They were young. They were like, you know. Um, 12 10 and 7 or something so they were really into you know uh my golf at the time and and really excited that i was in the lead and they came out to the golf course to watch me be in the last group and um one of them started crying actually when they found out i was disqualified and wow. and um, my brother was awesome he said you know meg you taught my kids a bigger lesson than than just you know winning a golf tournament that this was an important thing for them to learn and he said i want to thank you for that and, and you know and that that made it for me, for sure. Absolutely. When Hale Irwin was on the show and we talked, you know, honesty and integrity, he said, he was like, well, for me, it came down to the fact that I have to wake up and I have to look at my reflection and I have to be okay with that person in the mirror every day. When you look at, at Hale's, at that double putt, what, yeah. what did you think there? Because, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, he could have got away with that. What did you think the first time you <laughs> saw that? Um, well, I, you know, I, I've seen it happen actually quite a bit. It's amazing how much that happens and you're not paying attention and, but that's it. I mean, that's hail hit the nail on the head. You have to wake up with yourself and, and look at yourself in the mirror and, and, you know, he's an honest, good man. And, and he also played other sports too. So yeah. he, he played football, you know, and you're always trying to get away with stuff. Exactly. On the field. So, you know, it's interesting how, how golf, you know, doesn't allow that in you, in, in your you know, in your being and in the integrity that you have. Absolutely. Do you remember as a kid that anytime you got in trouble for lying to your parents or anything, maybe not golfing? Do you remember the first time oh, you got in trouble? Please. I grew up in an Irish Catholic family. You, I mean, oh, the guilt. You know, oh, the guilt is beyond. All my mom had to do is give me that look and I was <laughs> devastated. So, yeah, I, I'm, um, and, I, you know, lying, I can't do it. I'm like, I'm the worst liar in the world, which is kind of funny, but it's, you know, I couldn't do it. The youngest of six kids, I couldn't get away with anything. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> How good did it feel for you the day that you find out, I'm getting inducted and I'm going to be an immortal at the World Golf Bowl? <laughs> well, I didn't think of it that way, Charlie. I mean, I was, um, I was really uh, so overwhelmed. It, it, was, um, it was quite the phone call. And, you know, I, I know I had a good career and... Um, it was all rewarding in itself, but to then get that call about getting into the World Golf Hall of Fame just, you know, just highlighted my life, really. It really highlighted, a, a, you know, an already great career that I had, that I loved, and the, you know, the time that I was on tour, I mean, I was 30 years playing this game, and so it was just an awesome way to kind of put the cherry on top of my career. And how cool is it for you, looking at women's golf, it's now one of the most powerful sports in the world, and it's probably made bigger leaps and bounds than any professional sport in the past couple of decades. What's that like for you to see and the amount of money that these women are playing for? Yeah, now? I love it. It's great. It's, it's how it should be. I, I wish it were more for them. I wish more for them. And um, the one thing I don't envy is how much they have to travel now. I mean, I traveled a little bit overseas, but man, they're traveling a lot. And, and I struggled traveling. so that would have been harder on me, but, um, I just so appreciate what they do and, and how hard they work. I mean, these kids get it. They understand that the pro-am is an important day, that the sponsors are important yeah. to the, the whole thing working. And, um, they're just a really good group of kids from all over the world. Yeah. And they, you're right. They have, there's like a, a split of the athlete and the business mind are really, I think at right. a time high. Yeah, um, they get it. Yeah. If you had to give a piece of advice uh, to a young golfer getting started now in regard to honesty or just the game as a whole, what's one thing you'd love to see every young golfer have in them? Oh, that's a big question. I mean, uh, there's a lot. I mean, golf has so much to offer, but but what I want to see is the joy in playing it, that, that they actually love the game, that they're not playing it because they have to or they're forced to or you know, it's just something that they're good at, but they don't really want to do it. I, I, right. That's what makes me sad. 
I, I want to see kids have that joy and love for the game and the appreciation of it and along with the integrity of it and what it teaches you. Um, to me, that's the most important thing for, for any kid to learn and have when they get into the game of golf. Absolutely. And remember, folks, when you're playing, keep it honest, or you might have a visit from Meg with the <laughs> shillelagh to get things back in order. Oh. I need a shillelagh. <laughs> Gotta have a shillelagh. It should be in the golf bag. Well, act up. You got the shillelagh. It should be in the background here somewhere. <laughs> oh, Meg, thank you so much. And, guys, if you have not yet checked out this week's Moments That Matter special, catch it on all the World Golf Hall of Fame platforms and learn a thing or two about honesty and integrity in the game. Meg, thank you so much. Thank you, Charlie.